So welcome to Beaches Watch, Neptune Beach Candidate Forum. I'm Maria Mark, the Interim President for Beaches Watch. For those of you who aren't familiar with Beaches Watch, we are a nonprofit, nonpartisan civic organization whose mission is to promote and facilitate educated and productive citizen involvement in local and state government decisions that affect the quality of life here at our beaches communities. We achieve this by raising, monitoring, and researching issues, providing factual information to the general public and government officials, encouraging citizen participation in the solutions to beaches growth and quality of life issues, and organizing citizens such as yourselves for action. Before we get started, I'd like to make a couple of announcements. We always like to begin our program by recognizing uh, elected officials and um, those who help make our cities better. So uh, we have uh, Scott Wiley, Neptune Beach City Council. <laughs> we have Richard Arthur, who is also in the Neptune Beach City Council. <laughs> we have the Neptune Beach City, uh, City Manager, Andy Hyatt. And the timer will begin. 
Yes, let me also, I'm sorry, this don't count against your time. Eileen Kremski is our timer, so she will uh, let you know in 30 seconds and, uh, what, 30 seconds, that's it? And then your time's up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Josh. Go ahead. Perfect. Well, hi, I want to thank everyone for attending tonight, and I want to thank Beaches Watch for putting on this forum. My name is Josh Messenger, I'm your neighbor on Hopkins Street, and I'm running for Neptune City Council C4. I recognize quite a few faces out there this evening as I've been walking door to door throughout our entire city. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. Currently, I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing for a healthcare analytics company. I came to Neptune Beach by way of Stetson University, located in the sleepy and beautiful town of Deland, Florida. I knew instantly stepping into Neptune Beach that we are a community that is unique in a way few places are. I have amazing neighbors who are on my porch most evenings and have become like family. Just like many of you, I enjoy biking down First Street, taking my dog Hazel for runs through Jargo Park, especially on Green Market Saturdays. And of course, visiting the corner, having great food, and visiting with friends. This community inspired me to reach out to then Mayor Harry Pruitt and get involved in my newfound home. My first opportunity was to become a member and later president of the Ishbrand Beautification Committee. During our time, we as a committee have accomplished great things for Neptune Beach. One of the first projects we were able to tackle was at the addition of welcome signs to Neptune Beach. We sought out a designer to donate his work, and we fundraised to make the first signs happen. The committee then worked to fundraise and partner with the city to restore palm trees that were lost on First Street over the years to develop. We then collaborated with city manager Andrew Hyatt to extend Christmas lights onto Third Street, among many other projects, including the master planning for Jarbo Park. My second opportunity to give back to this community was to become a member and current president of the Friends of the Beaches Branch Library Board. During my tenure, we've been able to improve funding to the summer reading program children's reading programs, and teen programs like Comic-Con. Even the chairs you sit on here tonight have been donated by the Friends of the Beaches Branch Library. I learned during my years of consulting in Ethiopia that every dollar and cent counts. When you're working to provide those that have nothing with clean water, it's especially important to budget wisely, be creative, and have a fiscally conservative mindset. It is this mindset and creativity that I have brought to both the beautification and library boards. And when elected, I will bring to the Neptune Beach City Council. Thank you. So please introduce yourself and tell us how you intend to earn our public trust. Well, thank you everyone for coming tonight. Thanks to Beaches Watch for making this event possible. It's critical that the voters of Neptune Beach know the candidates who want to represent them. This has always been a very effective forum for achieving that goal. I'd like to thank my wife, Andy, a board member here for Beaches Watch, for her love and support through the process. Andy has been not only my primary campaign advisor, but more importantly, my rock. I certainly couldn't do this without her full support, and I can't imagine doing it without her at my side. When we got married, she said, you know, I'll travel with you anywhere, but I won't live anywhere else. I said, I'm in. I grew up in landlocked Indiana. After visiting Florida several times on family vacations and spring break trips, I knew this was where I wanted to live. But my career took me from California to Washington, D.C., where I worked in both The Voice of America and at C-SPAN, before I finally got an opportunity to become a Floridian. I came to Jacksonville in 2000 to be the first news director at WJCT, where I hosted an award-winning public affairs to radio and television program called Weekend Review. I bought my home in Neptune Beach late in that year, and I've been a taxpayer in Neptune Beach ever since. I'm driven to run for city council to help preserve our excellent quality of life and be sure that the inevitable growth that will occur here will not have a detrimental effect on our community. For me, quality of life means safe streets and public spaces, and our police department is second to none. It means maintaining infrastructure and preserving and defending the rights of homeowners, I'm proud to be endorsed by the Northeast Florida Association of Realtors. It means nurturing a thriving business community where established businesses can attract new customers and entrepreneurs can feel welcome to pursue their dreams. It means protecting our dunes to the east and the marsh to the west. We have such a wonderful natural environment. 
and we can't afford to lose it. It means a place where people can walk or bicycle safely to our beaches, parks, shops, and restaurants from anywhere in the city. A place where people want to raise their families, and like me, a place people know is their forever home. I'm a lifelong fiscal conservative. I have created and managed large budgets in the corporate world, and as a taxpayer, I know that every dollar that the government has to spend has come from people like you and me, who work hard, pay their taxes, and want government to spend that money wisely on things that benefit the entire community. My pledge to you is to be a good steward of that money. We'll get into specifics as this evening goes on, but my life experience, my business experience, and my commitment to this community make me the best choice to represent you in the Neptune Beach City Council. And I ask for your vote on November 6th. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what skills can you bring to the functioning of the city council? Well, I think I outlined some of those just uh, in the, the last, uh, the opening statement. Um, as I said, I've managed fairly large budgets over the course of my career. Uh, budgets that are, in fact, about a tenth the size of the Neptune Beach budget. They're departmental budgets, and I learned how to create a budget using a process called zero-based budgeting. Most of you probably know what that, what that is, but that is what the process that Neptune Beach uses, where you start from zero, and you determine what it is that you need, and then how much money you're going to spend on specific projects. So I think that's one of the things that I really have that I've done over the course of my career that will help me out being a, a member of the, the city council. Budget oversight is a very, very important function. And so I really want to bring that experience to the table. But I've also managed people. I've had to hire people, fire people. That's always a, a bad, bad thing to have to do, but it does happen occasionally. But I know how that process works, and I know how I can bring that experience to the city council in the unlikely event because we've got such a fabulous city staff now. I think we're nice and stable, and we're going to be able to maintain a good city staff for quite some time. But I'm also really invested in this community. I have been here for 18 years. I've been a taxpayer for 18 years. And I know that, as I said in my opening statement, every dollar that we spend has come from people like you and me. And I think that mindset will really help me approach this position in such a way that I'll be able to make great decisions based on facts, based on research, based on listening to you. And I've been a listener. I've made my career listening. I'll be a listener and I promise that I will listen to you, your concerns, and make sure that every dollar that's spent is spent wisely. Right. Josh, I'll repeat the question. What skills can you bring to the functioning of the city council? Well, I bring a, a lot of skills to the Neptune Beach City Council. I'm a collaborator. Since I came to Neptune Beach, I have got involved immediately, and I've been involved ever since. We've worked on many projects, from the Beautification Committee, to the Library, to the Beaches Town Center Agency, working with both Atlantic Beach, that private agency, and the City of Neptune Beach. I like to bring people together to accomplish goals. So, in Neptune Beach, we have a small budget. So if you want to accomplish goals that are grand and large, you have to get creative. You have to get creative with how you find those resources. Living in Ethiopia and working in Ethiopia, I learned that every cent counts, and you have to be creative on what you do with those funds. Just like we've done with the master planning of Jarbo Park. We went out and found a designer that we couldn't afford, but we got him to donate his services so we could afford. We then went out and fundraised those gaps so that the taxpayers were left with a very small amount of money to pay in return for something that was infinitely larger. So I'm someone that likes to collaborate. I like to achieve goals. I'm a doer. But I do it with many other people. I do it with other governments. So I'm someone that likes to bring people together to accomplish a goal. A city council, we're a team up there. And so you have to collaboratively move forward to achieve these large goals. We're going to be looking at infrastructure. We're going to be looking at large development projects that are going to come down and potentially threaten our quality of life along the way. You can't, one man cannot accomplish that. You accomplish these things as a team and working with the community. 
So I will work with this community. I will listen to you, and we will achieve great things together. Thank you. So what solutions would you suggest and or support regarding these parking issues? Well, um, I've worked extensively with the merchants and town center agency associations. So I'm very familiar with a lot of the business owners down there. We currently have a paid for parking system that's going through the works. It was recently approved by the Neptune Beach City Council. I think that's going to be a great tool to, one, uh, create turnover there. We have a lot of people that utilize that parking to go to the beach all day, which is harmful to some of our retail establishments and business establishments. We as the taxpayers of Neptune Beach shoulder that burden. So the paid for parking system that will come into place will alleviate that burden from Neptune Beach residents to those visiting and utilizing our spaces. The second part of uh, that item will be finances that it brings into the city. So that will be a great stopgap for the loss of the better Jacksonville funds and the loss of the homestead exemption funds that we'll probably experience here in November. I believe that residents should be able, for a nominal fee, be able to go and get a permit so that the Neptune Beach residents who are already paying for the implementation of this system and the maintenance of this system and the maintenance of the current parking will be able to have a discounted rate if not free parking in the town center. So I think these are all important parts. It's going to be an ecosystem. There'll be a little bit of play with it at the beginning, but I think it's a great program that will definitely benefit our merchants. It's been supported by our merchants association, so I, I'm in full support of that system. Thank you. Thank you. Tom? Well, you're not going to find much disagreement from me. Um, we do have a parking issue in town center, and I think everybody who's trying to go find a parking place knows it. And the parking plan that is under consideration of the Neptune Beach City Council will go a long way towards helping to resolve those parking issues. Um, I also believe that Neptune Beach residents should have an opportunity to buy a permit for a nominal fee and in that way have at least some reduced or some free parking for at least a little while. Um, it's a, a situation that we know we already all pay for the parking that is provided in Neptune Beach, and so we should have some opportunity to, um, to have a reduced rate. Now, where the issue is going to come is in the parking creek that goes out into the residential areas. Because there are always going to be those people who say, well, I don't want to pay to park, so they'll go and they'll find a free parking spot out in the residential area. So we've got to figure out a way to police that situation so that the folks who live in the areas adjacent to the town center don't come home some night and so they can't find a place to park near their home because everybody's trying to park for free to go to town center. This is going to be one of the things that the parking manager that we are now authorized to hire uh, will have to come and come with some creative solutions to that issue because it's going to be a pretty serious problem. But yes, turnover for parking spaces, uh, replacement of revenue from loss of the Better Jacksonville plan, all those things are, are going to be benefits from this paid parking program. Our concern is going to be how to worry about the folks who are going to be parking over in the residential areas, and I think that's going to be a, a consideration for the council and the city, um, the city staff and also the, the police department. Thank you. Okay, Tom, next question. Since um, you guys are bringing up the budget, we'll go ahead and address that now. <laughs> um, so, how will you address the budgetary shortfalls caused by the loss of the Better Jacksonville money and the proposed amendments that change property tax exemptions? And how will you preserve the levels of service for Neptune Beach residents? Two part question. Two part question. <laughs> Well, as we said, the paid parking program will be a, will be a, a part of that. Um, one of the things that's, that's interesting about ad valorem taxes, which I'm sure all of you know, is that as our property values increase, 
even as we're able to hold the line on the millage rate, we don't go back to the rollback rate, if we keep the millage rate level, then we will be able to recoup some of that revenue simply through increases in what we send in um, because the property values have gone up. So that will be at least one avenue as long as our property values continue to rise. And, um, unless we have another disaster like we had in 2007, I think we're in pretty good shape with that. So that's going to be one way we start to offset that revenue. But there are also going to be some creative ways that we have to look at, and I don't have all those answers right now because I don't know what those programs might be. But we are going to have to look for creative ways to generate revenue without going back to the homeowners who, and, and treat them like an ATM. I mean, I'm a homeowner. I don't want the city to come to me and say, well, you know, we need more money for whatever it is, and because we don't have any other way to raise that money, we're just going to raise your taxes. And that would never be something that I would consider voting for for an instance like that. So it's got to be something where we find creative solutions for how it is that we fund the government. Some of that's going to be in efficiencies. We'll be able to look for ways to better spend the money. We also need to prioritize projects and make sure that the items that we're spending money on are projects that are going to be a benefit to the entire community. And prioritization of projects is a, is a very, very important thing to me, to make sure that we're doing the good things first. Thank you. Josh, I'm going to repeat the question. So how will you address the budgetary shortfalls caused by the loss of the better taxable money and the proposed amendments that change property tax exemptions? How will you preserve the levels of service for Neptune Beach residents? Well, I agree. We need to get creative. Neptune Beach already has a relatively small budget. Most of our tax dollars go over the ditch to Duval County. It's the county, it's the state, and it's the federal government where we will see large projects happen. Jacksonville Beach is currently undergoing a large drainage project paid for with outside funds, not from their budget. Neptune Beach very recently started lobbying efforts and limited grant writing efforts. We need to expand those efforts. High returns on our money. If we're spending a dollar to make five, that's smart business. So we need to look at bringing a grant writer onto the city staff full time. That will pay for themselves in dividends to this community. Again, I've worked on a lot of projects in Neptune Beach. And to accomplish those things, we went out and sought private funds. We saw, went out and sought grant funding. We got, had to get creative. We had to look at alternative avenues to make these things happen. We can do that in, in many different areas through Neptune Beach. We can look at efficiency seats through fleet management programs. Right now, we have a lot of different vehicles, a lot of different brands. We can look at fleet management. In my line of work, I manage uh, car programs for employees. I manage budgets. So there's, there's ways to get creative and recoup funds. There's also ways to bring and generate new funding sources. We need to keep our taxes low. There's keeping your millage rate the same, and then there's doing rollbacks. And the past Neptune has actually done rollbacks to keep things flat for our community. Right now, by keeping the millage same, effectively taxes do increase because property value <laughs> So that's something we need to be mindful of as well. So we have a lot of unique opportunities ahead of us. Hiring a full-time grant writer, partnering with Duval County, partnering with our state officials who have brought us hundreds of thousands of dollars just recently. So it's expanding those relationships that will get these things done for us. Thank you. Josh, this next question goes to you. Stay safe. Um, so, what language would you like to see deleted, added, or changed to the Neptune Beach zoning codes regarding mixed use and planned unit developments? <laughs> Make sure you have your shield on. Yeah. <laughs> so, I fully think that the planned unit development needs to be overhauled. We need to look at, again, creative solutions for Neptune Beach. Do we want big box strip centers? for the rest of our lives in Neptune Beach? Or do we want to look at creative solutions? 
I proudly stood up and guarded this, helped guard this community with an amazing team of residents against an out-of-scale, out-of-touch apartment complex. That shouldn't be coming down our pipeline. So we need to revise our codes that will bring projects, that will bring green space, that will bring restaurants and community areas that thrive. We have amazing areas in the town center right now, like the courtyard, where people congregate, and it's a friendly atmosphere. That's what we want to see in the Kmart space. When you're coming forward to the Neptune Beach City Council and you're asking for a special exception, the project better be special. And we need to rewrite our codes in such a manner that those projects are brought forward. But that's also good business. That's good business for developers. So when they know and are looking at projects, they know exactly what they can do. They can streamline the process. And you'll have something beautiful for this community and profitable for the business owners. We also need to look at doing that not just in our PUD, but in our residential codes. Time and time again, I hear about residents who want to improve their property and add value to this community, but they, they, they run into uh, hurdles. And things aren't as customer friendly as they should be. So I think we need to look at our residential, not just our PUD. We have an opportunity to open this thing up and look into the future and create something that's streamlined for our residents, streamlined for our business owners, but produces something of quality that this entire community can be proud of. Thank you. Tom, do I need to repeat the question? Please. What language would you like to see deleted, added, or changed to the Neptune Beach zoning codes regarding mixed use and planned unit development? Well, I too was opposed to the proposed apartment complex at the 500 Atlantic. Um, I wrote a letter to the editor, to the beach's leader, and expressed, <coughs> excuse me, my opposition to that project. So we were pretty much on the same page on that. I agree that we do need to go back and look at the PUD language as it's written now. Um, it's very vague, and it needs to be tightened up. It needs to be brought into line with what the values are in our community. I think when that um, language was inserted into the, the code, that it was kind of done in a very, it, it wanted to be done quickly, and so that's what we got. So let's reopen that and see what needs to be tightened up. As far as mixed-use development, I'm a big proponent of mixed-use development. I think that green spaces and places where people can walk and bicycle and have the recreation opportunities all in a, in a nice area are really a good thing. And it's something that we should strive for. I know that as we look at attracting more young families to Neptune Beach, and as people like me start to get a little bit older and are looking to maybe downsize, are looking for something that is a little bit easier to take care of, um, some residential properties that are a um, that are in that kind of a situation would be very attractive to them. But we don't need 500 apartments. We don't need 300 apartments. We don't need 175 apartments, quite frankly, in that area. So let's go back, let's reopen that PUD language, and let's make sure that it, what it is that comes to Neptune Beach fits the character of our community and is a benefit to everyone here. Okay, thank you. Um, in, the, in the opening question, I ask you to introduce yourselves um, and you did, but I didn't quite hear the answer to the, maybe the second part of that, which was, how do you intend to earn the public trust of the Neptune Beach residents that you serve? Well, as I said in my opening statement, I've made my, my, made my living by listening. I've sat across the table from people ranging from Desmond Tutu and John McCain to Scott Wiley and Charlie Latham and um, everyone in between. And I have always had a reputation of being fair. I think when I was on television, when I was in the media, that was the highest compliment that I was ever paid. I was paid it a lot, and that may sound like braggadocio, but it's, it, it, it was true. I said, we never knew what your politics were, and you were always fair. And that's how I intend to approach this position on the, on the Neptune Beach City Council, is to listen, 
to take everyone's concerns into consideration. And maybe even if we don't agree to have a civil conversation about issues that are important to all of Neptune Beach. You know, when you have a conversation like that, there are three things that you can do. You can reject the other person's argument entirely. You can accept what it is that they're saying, or you can modify your thinking. And that's what conversation and debate is supposed to be all about. So the way that I can earn your trust is to sit down with you and talk to you and listen to you. And it's far more important that you talk than I talk. Because when I sit on the city council, that's when it's my turn to talk. When I'm sitting in your living room, when I'm sitting in a town meeting, that's when it's your turn to talk. But it's my pledge to you that I will listen and that I will take into consideration what it is that you say and never approach anything with a preconceived notion. It's just not in my nature. Thank you. Josh, how do you intend to earn public trust with the Neptune Beach citizens? Well, I tend to earn that trust the, the same way I have since coming to this town, by working with people and collaborating with people. I may not have always agreed with every, everything I've worked on, but it was a team effort led by multiple individuals. I worked on many projects on the Beautification Committee, and I was paid the compliment of becoming its president by the members of that board. I've worked greatly on that board to benefit Neptune Beach. The library board here, the library that benefits this entire beaches. I became a member of that, was paid the compliment of becoming president of that because I earned the trust and respect based on my actions to sit in that position. In that position, I've worked with Duval County. I've worked with Atlantic Beach, helping to benefit this library because there's a lot of stakeholders in this space. It sits in Neptune Beach. It benefits all three beaches communities. It's owned by the city of Jacksonville. It's run by the Jacksonville Public Library System. So I've learned the trust and respect of a lot of individuals along the way to help make those things happen. Like my opponent said, I'm here to listen to you. I'm here to listen to your concerns. That's why you're, we're running. We're here to serve you. If I'm speaking, it's, in, it's for a concern that has been brought to me, or a way to benefit this community. So I've earned the respect and support of many people in this community based on giving back to this community. And I'm going to continue to do that. I'm going to continue to serve the citizens of Neptune Beach to the best of my ability. And I'm going to always, always, always listen and respond based on the needs of this community. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Josh, you're <laughs> So, name three things that differentiate yourself from your opponent. Or more, <coughs> but I like threes. <laughs> well, I think one of the things that differentiates me is, is my involvement since coming to Neptune Beach. I've been very, very involved in a lot of different organizations. And in those organizations, we've accomplished a lot of projects. We, one of the biggest things we've been working on as a beautification committee and as the citizens of Neptune Beach is the master plan Jarbo Park. We've been, we went through a community master planning process. We went out and found a regionally recognized designer that would have cost us fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars to bring a plan forward. This cost the citizens of Neptune Beach less than five thousand dollars because we got that donated and we fundraised. It's that involvement and it's that creative thinking that I have brought to the table, and then I've worked with other people to enhance that. So I'm a collaborator for Neptune Beach, and I've been doing that very actively since my time here. I've traveled the world for work. I've had to lurk in Ethiopia, in very unique places where budgeting doesn't just necessarily mean saving a dollar here or a dollar there. It means people are going to get clean water that they've never had in their lives that could save their children or they won't. And that's, you know, maybe I won't live in great accommodations. Maybe that's, 
you know, I'm, I'm taking buses with chickens next to me to make it happen, but I've made it happen. One of my third things, which kind of goes off the boat, is my involvement with the community activism. I was approached by the No Kmart group when we had a large-scale apartment complex brought to us. I knew a lot about the code, I knew a lot about the inner workings of the city because of all of my involvement, and I helped them. And I advised them, I went to many community meetings, I donated my own money, so I stick by my word and I follow through. Thank you. Thank you. Tom? Well, I've been involved in the community. Who, who here has ridden the ferry uh, recently? Okay. Ridden the ferry? Anybody? I was part of the group that helped save that ferry. I'm very proud of that. Um, we got a committee together and we went to work and made sure that the St. John's River Ferry was available for all of the residents of all of the beaches. So I'm also someone who is, is involved in the community. And I've done a lot of projects as well that have benefited the greater Seven County region of Jacksonville. Um, if we have time later, we can talk about my work with JCCI several years ago. But what differentiates me from my opponent? Well, first of all, I'm a homeowner. I mean, that, it's just that a very basic thing. I came here, I got involved in this community, I got involved with a realtor. She said, you need to buy a house. <laughs> okay. So we found one in Neptune Beach, and I love my little house. It's a great little house. And I'm also a taxpayer. So I think that's one place where, where there's a difference. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing, it's just a difference. Um, I think I bring a lot more experience into this position in the world of, in, in the corporate arena, in understanding how budgets are done. Because I've done it, I've done it for years. Um, and I've done it in situations where we had to make tough decisions on do we have this or do we buy that program over there. And thirdly, I stick with things. Um, anybody who knows me, who knew me nine months ago, knows that I look a lot different than I did. I took a personal journey and I stuck with it, I stuck with the program, I made a plan, and I followed it through. And I'm very proud of that. So I think those are the things that I think you're looking for. Somebody who'll stick with it, who'll go, and I'm, my time is up. <laughs> OK, well, you could continue, because um, we'll now go to the closing statements. Um, each candidate will have, again, three minutes for the closing statement. Um, Josh, first of all. You. OK. Um, and because of time, because of the pretty good stories of, of time, we're not going over too many times, uh, we may have an opportunity to take maybe one or two questions from the audience, if and only if you ask the question without a 10-minute dissertation before you ask the question. That so, never happens here. I know. <laughs> I'm just glad that so, um, and I'm kind of going out on a limb because we normally don't take questions um, from the audience during this forums, but because of the um, what's happened with um, with Fred Jones to see and running that opposed, we do have some extra time. But we're going to go with the closing statements now, and then we'll see where we are after that. Well, I'm sure Josh and I both talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's why you're up here. That's right. Time. Well, thank you again to Beaches Watch for the opportunity to tell my story to the voters of Neptune Beach, and again to Andy for her support for this campaign, and so many others who have supported me in so many ways. I hope I've been able to convey to you my commitment to Neptune Beach. Through my career and in my volunteer activities, I've always taken pride in seeing personal, professional, and volunteer goals through their conclusion, and I will do so again as a representative. I've made a living by listening and asking tough questions when necessary. That experience will serve me well as your representative on the City Council. When it comes to spending your money, it is my pledge to listen to your concerns and represent your interests, even when they may run counter to my own and make decisions that are in the best interests of the community as a whole. I'll support projects that benefit all areas of the community. And be sure that growth and development happen in a way that will benefit all of our residents and preserve our quality of life. Nothing is more important to me than having a vibrant, thriving city that makes us all proud. I'm solidly invested in Neptune Beach as a property owner and a business person. I know that because I own a home here and have my business here that every decision that I make 
particularly concerning taxes, has a direct impact on me as well as on you. Like you, I want a safe, clean, and livable city that people are proud to call home, and where children who are raised here never want to leave, at least for very long, and want to come back to. I'm proud to be endorsed by State Representative Cord Byrd, Jacksonville City Council District 13 Representative Bill Gulliford, Vice Mayor Scott Wiley, Jacksonville Beach Mayor Charlie Latham, and the Northeast Florida Association of Realtors. They are people and organizations who have seen in me a strong community leader who will look out for the best interests of Neptune Beach. I've walked every neighborhood in Neptune Beach. I've never been more humble than to have someone answer the door and say, I'm voting for you after we talk. Each of those individual endorsements is as important to me as the ones from the people whose names you might recognize. They're the people who live, work, and play in Neptune Beach who want solid, invested, and mature representation on the city council. I pledge to be a public servant and not a politician, to answer and return your calls and emails and hear your concerns, and have civil, thoughtful conversations about issues on which we may disagree. I've spent a career approaching issues with an open mind, and know that there are valiant arguments to be made on multiple sides of any issue. I know you expect no less of your representative of the city council. The government that's closest to you is the one that has the most direct impact on your life. You have an important decision to make about who to believe, who you believe is the best prepared to move Neptune Beach in a positive direction. And I believe I am that leader. And I humbly and sincerely ask for your vote on November 6th. Thank you. I want to thank everyone here for coming and participating in the Beaches Watch Forum. A lot has been said tonight, but at the end of the day, I'm here to serve you. I will always listen to your concerns of the residents and the business owners here in Neptune Beach. Neptune Beach is a place I love and a community I want to help foster going into the future. We live in one of the safest communities I know. This is due in no small part to the diligence and dedicated officers of the Neptune Beach Police Department. On many ride-alongs with our officers, I have grown to appreciate even more their great service, and I look forward to so fully supporting them. I understand our city's codes and ordinances, and how we need to make them friendlier for residents who wish to improve their properties. As a businessman and a fiscal conservative, I understand our city's budget. I also understand what it takes to think outside the box and to find creative and collaborative solutions to our financial constraints. There are many opportunities for funding outside of the tax base, and I know how to take projects over the finish line for Neptune Beach with grants and private funds. I have the energy, experience, and dedication to accomplish great things with you as your Neptune Beach City Councilor. And tonight, I'm humbled to ask for your support and vote on November 6th. Thank you. officer Lowe these many years knows that, is that 
Locks only keep the honest people honest. Um, there are always going to be people who, who flout the law. So the only, the only way that we have that we can address those kinds of issues is to put more police on the streets. And Chief Mike has asked for at least two more officers. Again, we'd have to look for some creative funding solutions to do that. We probably would need to increase animal control to, to deal with the, um, the dogs on the beach issue. We do need to look at our short-term rental um, laws and make sure that they are in line with what our community wants, and I think they probably are. But again, when you're talking about people who are going to completely fight the law anyway, then all you can do is increase enforcement. And that's always going to be a resource issue. Um, as far as the trash being picked up, I know that if your trash doesn't get picked up, and Andy's going to hate hearing this, but you call Andy Hyatt, and he calls the, the trash pickup folks, and they come out and they do what they're supposed to do. And it really, that's, that's the beautiful thing about living in a city of the size of Neptune Beach. So we all probably have Andy's cell phone number in our phones, and we know we can call him, and we know he will respond, because it has been a very, very responsive uh, city government. So, so those are the kinds of things that I think that we need to look at, is increasing enforcement, making sure that our codes and laws are enforced evenly and fairly, and, you know, occasionally we have to hold somebody's feet to the fire. And honestly, if, you're, if I'm not sitting on the city council and your trash isn't picked up, and you call me and say, why haven't they picked up my trash? I'll pick up my phone and I'll speed dial Andy and I'll say, Andy, we've got a problem with somebody's trash. And at that point, it'll, it'll very likely get taken care of because that's the kind of city staff we have. I have great, great respect for our city staff. They do a wonderful job. And uh, can't thank you guys enough for the, for the work that you do. Well, uh, we, have, we have a couple questions in there, but they all revolve around code enforcement. Right now, we have a part-time code enforcement officer that also pulls double duty in other positions. He's in the process of retiring. We are budgeted for a full-time code enforcement officer. So we're going to be able to bring on a new person that with more energy that will be able to start looking at these issues. I'm all for friendly enforcement. We're a community. We're all neighbors. No one's perfect. So we need to look at it in a way where we politely encourage, over time, change in areas. It can be as simple as a friendly reminder, and then possibly a warning, and then if you have people that just refuse to be a good neighbor, then we can look at something as like a potential fine. But I don't want us to become a homeowners association where we're measuring people's grass by the inch, and we're going out knocking on doors and saying, look at this or look at that, your, your paint's chipping, so we need to get that. Because there's a lot of people that might have financial constraints that could prevent them from doing certain things. When it comes to trash cans being left out, we can look at code enforcement on that again. We don't need to hire more officers, we just need to have a full-time code enforcement individual that goes around and has polite, friendly conversations with our neighbors to make those improvements. When it comes to Airbnb, the state legislature put codes in effect that if Neptune Beach didn't write something, we were going to be stuck with what the legislature gave us. It was an attack on our home rule. Right now, you can't have short-term rentals up to 28 days. And that's something that can be enforced. Friendly reminders, you have people that move to town and may not know that law, but a friendly reminder and then fines down the road can easily correct these things. Again, we want to improve everyone's property values, but we want to stay in a friendly, lovable community through the process. That doesn't mean spending more money and more resources. That just means being more judicial with the resources we already have and the budgets we already have. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Um, what is your experience with um, <coughs> obtaining permits for construction, especially large construction, if you have that opportunity um, in Neptune Beach. Uh, do you feel that there that you've encountered barriers in your effort, or um, is it an easy process? Any, any, anything you'd like to change? Well, I uh, worked to renovate my home back in 2014. We actually had to gut renovate it, and it was a very extensive process. 
We had a, an individual named Don Ford on our staff at the time, but now we've moved to a, a contract-based system when it comes to our inspection pro, uh, process. It was, it was a long process. I had to call Councillor Scott Wiley and other, other councillors to say, where are my permits at? They've been on the desk for over a month now. What's going on? So we need to become more customer friendly when it comes to whether it's a shed or a large scale renovation or a new build. We're currently building a home on Bull Street right now that will be my forever home and I'm really excited about that. We just finished our groundworks project which required permitting, surveys, geographic surveys. And there's definitely a lag with the city. If the city knows you and knows you well, things tend to move a little bit smoother. But I've talked to many people in this room tonight that have had problems, whether it was something within our ordinance or possibly a confusion with staff. So we need to put some processes and procedures and trackers in place to make things easier for Neptune Beach residents that want to go through the permitting process to greatly improve their homes. We shouldn't punish people who want to do a permit and want to do things legally and properly. So I am all for reforming our codes. We have a great, great staff, don't get me wrong, that has done amazing work over the years. But we need to give them the tools and we need to give them the code that makes it easier for homeowners to improve their property and build their forever homes like I'm doing now. Thank you. Well, I've been very fortunate that I've not had any uh, permitting issues uh, with my home. When we had the addition put on the back, the contractor went and pulled the permits and took care of all of that, and it was a very easy process. So that has not been an issue. The only one permit I've ever had to pull, I was replacing a fence. It was a direct replacement, so um, it was a, an easy thing. I went in, gave them a drawing, they said, here's your permit, and you have to go. So uh, that has not personally been an issue for me. <coughs> However, I have, like Josh, talked to a lot of people who have had those kinds of issues. And I agree, we do need to make sure that the process is one that is, is friendly and one that is welcoming to people, that they come in and they don't feel like it's an adversarial situation. If they want to get a permit and they want to do things legally, then by all means, let's make it a, an easy process for them. Because we do want people to improve their properties. We do want people to have the kind of home that they want and not have, as Josh referred to a few moments ago, a big homeowners association telling them exactly what they can or can't do. That being said, we do have to have rules, and those rules need to be applied fairly and consistently across um, the entirety of the community. But the permitting process, <clears throat> again, I don't have a, a huge amount of experience with that. I've talked to people that have. So, making sure that when people go in with all of their ducks in a row, get a permit quickly and can do the things they want to do with their home, if they want to do things legally, we should encourage that and make sure that we do have the kind of community that we all want. Okay, we have time for one more question. This will be quick. Okay. Something Tom said earlier, and if you could clarify it for me, he mentioned that he was a homeowner and he paid taxes. Are you a homeowner and do you pay taxes? And my second question is, have you ever had an ex any an experience in public speaking? Do you have a career of public speaking? Uh, thank you for that question. Um, to clarify, I am currently building my forever home right now on Bull Street. Uh, we've done our groundworks. Uh, we're really excited to be going through our architectural process. Uh, yes, I am a taxpayer. I am a homeowner. I, I don't know why there was any confusion on that point. Um, what was the second part of your question? Uh, public speaking. Public speaking? No. Um, I've been involved. I've spoken in a lot of community events. I've spoken in a lot of uh, neighborhood events that the new uh, apartment complex group hosted. Um, so I am used to speaking uh, to our neighbors and, and to people in this community. But I can't say I have any formal training in public speaking. But uh, a lot of the things I enjoy doing, like, like helping others, leads me to be in those situations. So thank you. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a homeowner, and I'm very accustomed to public speaking. Um, I, I, a 
lot of you know that I did have a, a broadcasting career. Um, and I'm very proud of it. And I really enjoyed it. I, I really, I liked being on television. It was a lot of fun. Um, so, yes and yes. <laughs> Okay, um, I think that wraps up our questions from the audience. Um, we've got about five minutes left, so um, I just want to thank you all for coming out tonight. Again, this is a service that Beaches Watch provides our community because it's so important that you as the voters are informed and you know the candidates and you know where they stand on their issues. So let's give a nice big round of applause.